Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and we want to find out whether torpedoes and torpedo cruisers are a good weapon in the Numanthagons expansion for Hearts of Iron 4. So we are going to do a little play test over here where we are going to pit a torpedo cruiser fleet against a battleship uh, squadron of the Americans. So you can see that the United States Task Force here with no less than six battleships and a lot of uh, light ships is going to engage uh, uh, our light cruiser fleet of 30 torpedo destroyers. Uh, so, sorry, torpedo cruisers. So that's going to be extremely interesting. Uh, and I want to find out whether it is a good battle, going to be a good battle in the current version of Hearts of Iron 4, which is version 1.62, I believe. So a little bit after the Man the Guns expansion, they have ironed out a little bit um, of this and that. And they have increased the torpedo hit to chance, uh, torpedo hit chance uh, in the last patch. So that's going to be interesting. So before we go into that, uh, I want to talk a little bit why we are testing that. This is part of a let's what's a spin-off of a Let's Play series that we are doing, where we are focusing on this technology as Japan, and we have been fairly successful. Uh, and you can have a look at the main series. Um, I'll put a link in the description and probably on the video right about now. Um, but yeah, this is not part of that. In this, for this particular playthrough, we have uh, split off all of our torpedo cruisers in the year 1942 and have been looking for, yeah, a hostile fleet to engage for some time. And now we find it, and now I want to engage it. So, and this is based on the national na focus tree of Japan, the new naval estimates into cruiser modernization into long lance torpedoes, which does give us the national spirit of the long lance which does give torpedo screen penetration plus 20%. So that means we should have a chance of scoring torpedo hits on enemy capital ships uh, instead of the screens. Even if they do have a good screening ratio, we should be able to penetrate that in about 20% of the cases. We also got the torpedo cruiser technology, which did allow us to build new torpedo cruisers, in particular the Hakazi class, which does feature four banks uh, of torpedoes of level three in this case, with a little bit of AA sprinkled in, some guns that we did have to put on that, um, and some other things, but the main bit really is the torpedo attack of, of a whooping 250 points for a ship of well, not quite 5,000 cost. And the big benefit of this is twofold. Well, firstly, it's a relatively cheap ship, so compared to a battleship, this might cost you about 10,000 points, whereas this light cruiser costs you less than half of that, maybe a third of that, uh, because these battleships aren't exactly modern, and this is a very modern ship, so yeah, I would say about a third to may maybe maybe half, maybe a third uh, of what a battleship would cost you, and torpedo attack damage does apply regardless of armor. So if you have a big battleship, as you probably know, it does have a lot of armor, and if you're not penetrating that, you're doing a lot less damage, unless you're using torpedoes, and torpedoes is what we're using. Uh, we also have a couple of Kawakazi classes which are very similar, except they are a little bit less modern in pretty much all aspects. So, yeah, similar ship, but slightly less torpedo attack. We have gathered about 30 ships, no, exactly 30 ships. Uh, some of them are rather experienced, some of them have a little bit of a green, green feel to them. Um, they are under very good commander, which we're going to talk about in a second. So, Mr. Aotsawawa here has various different... Uh, traits that are very good. Seawolf, which is irrelevant, but which does give us the chance to upgrade to Torpedo Lancer, uh, which does give Torpedo Screen Penetration plus 25%. So remember, this is on top of the 20% of the Long Lance National Spirit that we got. So this is a 45% probability to hit capital ships instead of screen screening ships. And Loading Drillmaster, which does give us Torpedo Cooldown minus 25%. So normally you shoot a torpedo every four hours, I believe. And with this, it should go down to every three hours. And we're going to see about that in a second. Other than that, he does have some damage modifiers and all of that should be good. Ideally, he should also have cruiser captain. But that's not what we get this time around. Good. So that all in results in the Hawakazi class having 377 torpedo attack, which is, of course, much better than uh, it ought to be on the surface. We also have got, I should talk about the R&D process. So we should have, um, yeah, the torpedoes, of course. But we also got the magnetic detonator, which does give more light cruiser torpedo attack. And we have got the homing torpedo, which does give another light cruiser torpedo attack chance. So uh, that should be fairly nice. And this is 
Honestly, one of the other good things about uh, going torpedo route potentially is that you only really have to research these technologies from the naval tab. Everything else is a little bit irrelevant. Uh, you can see that regardless we have some of these things, but it's not really required. The only thing that is required is, I believe, this. And electric torpedo isn't even required. We also got cruiser hull uh, pretty much just for the engine. Right, so without further ado, we are going to slow down time considerably because we want to go through this hour by hour and really see the effects and playtest what's happening here and whether it is a good attack. And I have no idea what's com going to come out of this test, so let's see. Um, and the reason why we're starting before the actual battle is that the first hour of the battle will already potentially involve some casualties. So, yeah, we are going to have to see. We should be able to spot them now, roundabout. And that should end in a battle fairly soon. I read naval battle results. Okay, that's over here. And irrelevant, that's just a little bit of anti-submarine warfare. As we've seen, I think, to a very high degree during the actual uh, playthrough. Okay, come on. Let's accelerate time a little bit because I want to get into this battle. Right, there we are. I was afraid I would have needed to advance time a little bit. Okay, so here we are. This is the first hour of the battle. I don't think we have seen any damage so far. No, everyone seems to be fine. So all of these ships are indeed also going into the battle undamaged. And we have six battleships on the American side. The Idaho, the New Mexico, the California, the North Carolina, the Maryland and the Mississippi. Uh, these two guys have a little bit of damage before the actual battle started. They also have a heavy cruiser, the USS Vincennes, and 10 light cruisers, 18 destroyers. So pretty much the exact number of light ships that we got, but a lot more heavy ships. So let's go through this. The the Overall, the weather is clear, so there's not much uh, to be said about that. And the admirals are honestly very, very much, pretty well matched up, I have to say. Uh, their positioning is great, our positioning is of course perfe perfect because we don't have any capital ships. Uh, our light guns ac actually exceed their light gun damage, um, but our, we don't have any heavy guns whereas they do. They have 900 torpedo damage, we have 1000 torpedo damage. And we've got even better anti-air, so that's nice to see. Right, first hour of the battle, we see damage to four of our ships. Very light damage all in all, the worst damage is to the Tsunami which do, did receive 5 points of light damage. All the other guys are fine though. On the American side, we don't see any damage to the American capital ships. We do see some damage to these destroyers, none to the light cruisers, and all of the damage to the light cruisers, uh, to the light destroyers, to the, to the torpedoes is due to light guns. So these are obviously turns where torpedoes are not in use yet, but I would expect them to come in use in the next turn. So over the first two turns we've only see, seen light gun damage on their side. On our side we are receiving more damage but it's not critically much. I would say I should point out that we have very low organization coming into this battle because we wanted to intercept uh, this fleet just for this demonstration to happen. So on our 8 now we should hopefully see some torpedo damage. Not on any of the capital ships yet. On the light ships we do see some light d light gun damage, but no torpedo damage yet. No, indeed, we do see some torpedo damage, and it immediately sinks a light cruiser, but it's only a single hit, I should say, so it's not actually that great. Out of our 30 torpedo cruisers, only one has scored a torpedo hit, and that was on a light ship and not on a capital ship, so that's a little bit disappointing. Still, we are holding out, so let's go ahead and go to our number 9. And we see more light damage being inflicted on the enemy ships. No torpedo damage or any of that. Some of our ships are occurring a little bit of substantial damage. The Marakumu is down to 86%. Another hour where we are mainly dealing in light damage. And no damage to these capital ships at all. And the hour 11 is going to be... Do we see any damage to them? No, we do not. So I'm actually not sure whether the every third hour rule does work out over here. So number 12, no torpedo damage to them. No torpedo damage on any of these light ships or any of these light ships. Our ships are starting to look a little bit shaky. 
Our number 13. There we go. That does seem like a lot of damage all of this suddenly uh, happening. On these capital ships, we don't see damage as such, but we see them trying to withdraw, so that's interesting. And I think that's because we did sink like nine destroyers by, at this point. Light damage, light damage by or damage by light guns. All of you guys are fine. Yeah, so they're pretty much trying to withdraw. But so far it's only light damage, so maybe at 14 hours? There we go. No. No damage to the enemy capital ships yet, so I'm slightly concerned whether the bypass chance actually works. We should have a 45% chance to penetrate the enemy shipping. Do we actually receive another light cruiser while we're going here? I think one of the like cruisers that we've just built might have joined up um, in the during the battle, which is interesting to see. Right, so 15 hours. There we go. I still do not see any light, any torpedo damage to any capital chip. So I'm slightly concerned whether it actually works in, in Hearts of Iron 4. And I don't see that it does. Light gun damage, light gun damage. Another hour and no significant damage on any of these he heavy, ca capital heavy ships. But there we go. So yeah, at 1700, the USS North Carolina did receive a heavy, did receive torpedo damage and it immediately sank. It was just a straight out sunk in one go. All of these other sinkings that we got are by light guns though. Still already at this point, I think this is a good battle. This this is this is this is sinking an enemy battleship with torpedoes just like that. More damage received over here, but mostly by light guns. So our light guns are doing the damage over here, not the torpedoes so far. 21 22 maybe is going to be another torpedo round, is it? No. 23 maybe? No. At least not on these capital ships. So torpedo attacks seem to be rather rare, but when they do hit, they can score an enormous amount of damage. And you can see by now we have sunk two light cruisers. And I'm really not I'm really not sure this is this is an appropriate ratio. We are I'm not sure whether we are, but there you go. At two in the morning. We sink two more f capital enemy ships. The USS Idaho and the USS Vincennes, Vincennes? Uh, has been have been sunk by receiving a lot of torpedo damage, just like that, and in one go. All of the other guys, though, two light cruisers sunk by da torpedo damage, and I don't see any destroyer being sunk by torpedo damage. That doesn't have to say a lot. And there we go. Suddenly, you know, three hours later. We do see three more capital ships, three more battleships going down, just like that. And of the light cruisers? No, just just two sunk by, by torpedoes. So I'm not entirely sh sure what to make out of this battle, to be honest, guys. So yeah, let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. Overall, I have to say a very, very good battle. We did receive some damage, um, and that was to be expected. And I'm, you know, this is not a power play. This is... This is just us casually producing 30 uh, torpedo cruisers because we can, and some of them are damaged. The Marukumo, in particular, has taken quite a bit of damage from the Santa Fe, San Luis, Maryland, Colombia. But all of the other heavy capital ships don't actually, they were not able to deal enough damage against us. Uh, whereas you can see some of our guys have been doing a lot of damage against uh, some of these capital ships. Sunk by Shikazi. And I just want to find out, the USS Maryland sunk by Shikazi did do nearly the entirety of the damage and on the Idaho. So um, that does tell me that they were sunk by a torpedo just in one go. So that's extremely interesting to see, it, isn't it? You can see a lot of these 100% damage. Just. But still, I'm not sure whether actually the this effect works out as intended. Torpedo screen plus 20% and plus 
25% and plus 20% over here should mean that every second hit is scored on a capital ship, I would believe, or I would expect. So, yeah, we're not really seeing that, um, but you know what? Uh, still a very interesting battle to me. So, um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously send the Marukumu here towards repairs, and then we're going to take out 29 remaining light cruisers. Maybe the Okazi as well, 28 remaining light cruisers. And we're going to try to find another battle and I'm uh, going to put in a cut and I'll see you guys in a second here. And here we are again. This time we have stumbled upon an American aircraft carrier fleet in the Red Sea. So the Americans over here do have four aircraft carriers, four heavy cruisers and about 30 light ships. And most of them actually light cruisers. So that is very interesting. And even in the first round... So even as the battle started, uh, we did sink the USS Meredith, an early dis uh, destroyer. Not much damage. We also received about 12 light damage uh, on the Akiukazi. We have 31 light cruisers ready. Uh, against there, again, 30 light ships and 4 capital ships. So this time I'm in extremely intrigued to see whether we will get any torpedo hits on the carriers because usually the light crews or the screens should support uh, the heavy cruisers and the heavy cruisers should support the carriers so if the torpedo penetration does work uh, we sh should see some hits over here so weather is clear that does give the american air groups um, as much time as they need really so let's see what's going to happen uh, the battle is starting at eight o'clock at nine o'clock we see the first further damage by them uh, torpedo damage even uh, on the uss Agalola. We are receiving more damage and some very, very heavy damage by naval bombers uh, there on the Nadakazi ship, um, the third from the top. Um, I don't see the entire list and this is a little bit of a design flaw to me. Uh, but yeah, so other than that though, we don't see any torpedo damage on either the carriers or the heavy cruisers. So again, I'm wondering, I'm left wondering, 45% of our torpedoes should be launched at their capital ships and I don't really see that. More light damage on some of these other ships. Light gun damage, light gun damage, light gun damage. So yeah, that's interesting. 10 hours. No further big damage on our ships as far as I can tell. Uh, some light damage on their ships. No torpedoes though. Torpedoes were launched at 9 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, still no further damage by torpedoes, but we are starting to sink a lot more of their destroyers. Don't see any ca any major damage on any of our ships. 12 hours. So at this point, I would expect more torpedo damage. And indeed, we are sinking some destroyers with torpedoes. But again, no damage against any of their capital ships. So we've already sunk two ships. The USS Agalola and the USS Walkie by torpedoes, and we haven't really sunk anything else. By torpedoes, at least. 13, 14. At this point, they are starting to withdraw. No, no damage on their side yet. No further damage, I should say. Some heavy gun damage down there on the Namakazi. And other than that, yeah. Now that's to be expected. We would expect the next round of torpedo damage to come in now. Roundabout. Although I don't see any further. So that's unfortunate. 16 hours maybe? No, nothing. Not even on these uh, smaller ships. All of this is light gun damage. And at this point their screening ratio is starting to drop. So I'm wondering whether we will now start to see the torpedo damage occurring on the capital ships themselves. Other than that, still mainly light gun damage on, on their side. So we did sink a couple of ships, ships by la torpedoes, but it wasn't too many. Not yet anyway. 20 hours. There we go. So the first time we are seeing capital ships, but it is at a screening uh, at a screening efficiency of eight, only 87%. So I'm wondering whether we actually do see, and that's after we've sunk two capital ships, whether it actually works the way that it's intended. So 
the way that I read it, the screening penalty should apply a bit more aggressively. So yeah, other than that, so yeah, now we are really seeing lot of torpedo damage, not only on the light ships, but also on the heavy ships, but still not on the carriers. And the screening efficiency of capital ships is now also somewhat reduced. One, two, three, four. We actually lost our first ship, the USS, uh, sorry, not the USS, the Asangani, by, sunk by USS Boyle. Received most of the damage from light guns, but also uh, light torpedo cruisers did finish it off. Other than that, though, still no big torpedo damage on more of these light ships. Yeah, but all of the heavy ships that we have sunk have been sunk by torpedo damage. And indeed, the carriers have not received any damage so far. We are coming up to the 24-hour mark for this battle. And there goes the fourth heavy ship, also sunk by torpedoes, but still no damage on these capital ships. And the screening efficiency is back up to 100% because we've sunk all of their capital ships. So that does lead me to believe, honestly, that it doesn't work as intended. I'm smelling a bug here. I don't know about you guys, but I don't see torpedo damage being inflicted on them as long as they do have a high screening uh, screening ratio and that's not entirely what we should be seeing uh, let's take a look on our damage as well we are mostly receiving damage from light guns sometimes from other things and our light guns are truly doing uh, the most damage still nothing so far absolutely nothing on their carriers but there we go one critical hit by torpedoes and again at a screening efficiency that is somewhat lacking this is debatable maybe that last hit was was actually done by ignoring their screen uh, screening ratio and we have sunk another another carrier over here but now the screening efficiency is back to 100 and indeed their last carrier does escape so that leaves only light ships over here and I think they will be slaughtered primarily by light gun damage and very soon this battle should conclude. There we go. So that does give us the very nice overview. Again, a very good kill ratio, I believe. Um, this is, of course, against the normal AI. So it's not, not a big achievement uh, by any means. Uh, but still, I do think this is a very good uh, design. And the reason why I'm playing on uh, normal difficulty is pretty much so that I don't uh, get any bias to, towards any ship type. So the mechanics behind this should be fairly good. And you can see some of these killing blows. Again, the uses war torpedo damage. And again, it seems to... For some reason, I think this has been a, a, around a long time. But it seems to always uh, prioritize the ships that are highest in the order. So I think that's somewhat to do with the numerical stacking there. But yeah, other than that, you should see that yeah, one of our ships... The Nodakazi was damaged extremely heavily. The Akazi heavy damage, the Asuna somewhat heavy damage. But all in all, I think this is a very good result. Um, and I'm going to see whether I'm going to get another quick battle in just uh, to get 3 out of 3. But then, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for... No, 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 no. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. In our third big fight. And what a big fight it is. So, it is about a year later, so it did take some time to draw up the enemy, but we have now 36 of our torpedo cruisers arrayed against their 51 screens against their, what, 10 battleships, heavy cruisers and battle cruisers, and three carrier fleets, including the HMS Hood, which is the pride of the fleet of the British. So, let's see how this last battle is going to play out. It's starting at zero hours, which I think is fantastic because that makes our life quite a li bit, little bit easier. So in the first hour, we are taking quite a bit of damage by heavy guns on the Oikazi up there, down at to 21%. We are doing some light damage to some of these ships, but really not that much of an effect. And what I like about this battle is that it really should give us an answer about will the p torpedoes penetrate uh, their screen. Even though they have a screen of screening efficiency of 100%, we should see that every now and then we are dealing some damage there. So second round, obviously a light gun round, not a torpedo round. 
so that's all right. We're taking more damage as we go over here, so that's a little bit critical. But then again, the, they, these guys have overwhelming uh, numbers. Except, of course, in torpedoes, where we're dealing, able to do much, much more if we are doing some damage at all. HMS London was damaged before the battle, so these are not damages that we did. So even though it's now three hours gone, we haven't seen any torpedo attack. Hour number four, still I don't see any torpedo damage, I don't see any additional damage on any of these ships. Which is also a little bit funny, because we should by this point expect to see some torpedo damage. Hour number five, again no change on these capital ships. Fourteen. No, 22 of our ships are by now damaged, so the vast majority of our ships is damaged, and that doesn't spell a very good result for us. Our number 6, still only light gun damage. Still no damage on any capital ship. Our number 7, still nothing sunk at all. Our number 8, and we are seeing some of them are starting to withdraw, even though they haven't received any damage as far as we can tell. Some of their light screens have by now received quite a bit of damage though. So let's see, there we go, that's the first sunk by torpedoes. So at 9 hours uh, the first torpedo damage does come in and it's again against light ships. So I'm really not sure the game is working as it, it is perpetuates to. Are we Kazi down to 65%? Hood trying to withdraw. There we go, second damage by light guns. All of this is now light gun damage that is starting to occur. And at this point their screening ratio drops down to 90%. And at this point I would expect that we will be seeing more light or uh, more torpedo damage than we did see before. So 12th hour now. Some more torpedo damage on destroyers though only. Still nothing as far as I can tell on capital or even carrier ships. There we go. Our first cruiser goes down. Sunk by... A mix of light heavy guns and torpedoes. Still not much in terms of torpedo damage on their heavy ships though. And their screening ratio is down to 80%. So we should really start to see the majority of our torpedoes should go through. And indeed these guns have low, these guys have low evasion. So I would expect them to lose much more than uh, they are. So yeah, now it is night, night has fallen. So that means the carriers are a little bit... Words off, and there we go. See, now uh, the screening ratio was temporarily very, very low, and we could see immediately see uh, HMS Remillus and HMS Resolution. So, two battleships are being sunk by torpedoes in that very round. So, that's a very nice result for us. On the other hand, we have lost a second light cruiser, and the enemy are getting some reinforcements, which I actually appreciate because that will draw this battle a little bit more. HMS Repulse goes down, also sunk by torpedoes, and again the screening ratio is coming up again a little bit, so I'm not sure whether we will see more battleships being sunk, but we do see Royal Oak going down, so all of a sudden I'm not too sure whether, whether we are seeing that the torpedoes are working as intended. Very difficult to see over here. Four battleships, four capital ships sunk. Now the screening ratio is back up to 100%. So if we do see a battleship go down or a major ship go down, that would be a strong indication that it is actually working as intended. Irrespective of that, I think what we're seeing is a very decent uh, result over here with three light cruisers sunk on our side and four capital ships, four light cruisers and 17 destroyers sunk on their side, 20 destroyers now. And again, the screening ratio is coming down as we are sinking their light ships, but... But... Will we be able to penetrate? There we go, that is... What? Another destroyer, oh, an American destroyer sunk, okay. Okay, yeah, so that was probably the reinforcements, a couple of American destroyer squadrons. Which did pump up their screening ratio, and as long as is at its, as is this as it is this high, we again don't see any damage being done to their capital ship ships. So that's an American light cruiser, no change in the capital ships that were being sunk. So yeah, now it's down to only light ships that are trying to withdraw and they're, they're being pummeled uh, by light gun damage. Right, so all in all four light cruisers lost, which is unfortunate. Four heavy ships sunk, four light cruisers 
sunk on their side, uh, 40 destroyers sunk on their side, and a couple of ships, so that's alright. We might get into a second battle over here, so into into repetition of this battle. Let's make sure that we don't over-aggressively split off any, any guys on our side. Indeed, I think we might put that to low. Because we want to follow up with another attack over here and see whether that will work out. So let's go ahead and see whether we do get a fourth battle. Uh, un other than that though, yeah, there we go. So now we see that their screening ratio is terrible. It's only 13% because they have lost all of these light ships in their last withdrawal. And again, it's a battle starting at 24 hours, so we should see at one hour. No damage on anyone. Second hour, light gun damage. Third hour, and this is the torpedo round. And as their screening ratio is extremely low, we immediately obliterate them with torpedoes, torpedoes, and torpedoes. So just in one hour, four capital ships of the Brits do go down. So one, two, and now we should see again a torpedo attack. Yeah, there we go. And it's sinking, sinking another battleship, a couple of battle cruisers, and even a carrier because the carriers are also screened very low efficiency. One, two, and now we should see them sunk. And that is indeed what happened over here. So, yeah, a mu a, an extremely nice follow-up attack with nine capital ships sunk and five destroyers. So, an extremely important campaign in the here in the Red uh, Sea. But most importantly, I do wonder whether the screening penetration is working as I would have thought it is. So, I would have thought with the long lance torpedoes, we get a screen penetration at plus twenty percent, and with our guy over here we get another 25% because he does also have the Lancer capability and that should amount to 45% and I would have expected 45% uh, to be the chance that we are penetrating their screen although it might also be that 45% is their lower end of the screening ratio at which we are really starting to, uh, to do a lot of damage. I think that might be the better interpretation but you know what that being said uh, I leave the question up to you so let me know whether you think uh, firstly, does that vindicate the concept of the light cruiser, uh, which which has this very low uh, research costs and this very low build cost compared to all of these capital ships that we just sunk? And secondly, do let me know whether you think I'm onto something here with the mechanics of the game. Until then, uh, I'm happy if you guys watch my entire series uh, on on the battle cruiser, oh, sorry, on the torpedo cruiser concept. Uh, but of course you don't have to. So thank you very much for watching and do leave a like if you like the video. Bye bye guys.